Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you've been here before, if you have not been here, welcome to my channel. My name is Anita and I am Daydreams of Quilts Online. Today is part two of making the Everest from Paw Patrol Halloween costume for my daughter. Well, today we are making the shirt of the costume. Before we get started, I just want to point out that this shirt is available in my Etsy shop and my, on my website at www.daydreamsofquilts.ca. It says, yes, I sew, no, I don't hem pants. Okay, so I am cutting out the shirt for the costume and I'm using Ellie Dactyl 5K. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, this was a pattern she put out for free if when her Facebook group hit 5,000. So I think you can still get a code from her Facebook group if you join it to um, get this for free, but I'll put the link down below. So I'm cutting the shirt out of the, the mint colored fabric. And so I've got that laid out and then I'm gonna do the sleeves with the purple fabric. And the sleeves are cut on the fold, so I've got that ready to do one sleeve and then I'll refold and do the second sleeve. And then for the waistband and neckband, I'm going to use the gold and then I'm gonna add two more strips of gold at the shoulder so that it looks like Everest's vest. So I will get this cut out and then we can start sewing. Okay, so here is everything cut out and I cut two extra neckband pieces to put at the top of the sleeves. I'll flash up a picture of Everest here. Um, the trim on her vest is kind of a gold color. So. so I'm going to just baste those extra pieces to the top of the sleeve before I get going with the whole pattern. And this is not part of the Ellie Dactyl pattern. This is just because I'm doing a costume that I'm doing this. Okay, so I've folded the, the strip in half, wrong sides together and I'm just clipping it together with the top of the sleeve with Wonder Clips. And this gold is a bamboo jersey, so it is thinner than the purple fabric, which is probably good because this seam is gonna get pretty thick with four layers at the end, but this is a very thin fabric. So, so wrong sides together and then pin around the curve of the sleeve. Okay, so I've just Baste it around with like a eighth of an inch straight stitch just to hold all of this together so that when I go to put this sleeve into the shirt I'm not going out of my mind with everything slipping and sliding so uh, it doesn't have to be perfect it's going to be cut off with the uh, knife of the serger anyway or it'll be in the seam allowance if you're using a stretch stitch so that's one sleeve and I'm just gonna repeat with the second sleeve. Okay, so if you have any excess hanging off the end of your sleeve, just trim it with a pair of fabric scissors. And we are done with prepping the sleeves. Now we are going to need to do some extra work on the front of the shirt. And the back has a higher neck than the front. So that's the back, the front. We're gonna to wanna to put a little cargo pocket detail on here uh, because Everest has cargo pockets on her vest. So I'm just gonna cut um, two one inch wide strips by the width of fabric. I folded the fabric double because it's longer than the cutting mat. So I'm just trimming off the edge. One inch or maybe, yeah, one inch should, should be good. We just want a thin little piece like trim. Okay, and we're just gonna turn this right sides together and just sew all the way down with like a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch, between eighth and a quarter, um, just to make this big long tube and then we're gonna turn it right side out and then we'll have a piece of trim to applique onto the front of the shirt. Okay, so I've sewn all along the edge and I'm going to just take a safety pin, pin it to the end 
and just start feeding that through this tube, which is gonna take a little while, but I ended up cutting my width of fabric in half because I don't think I need that whole length. So there's no need to turn that whole length of tube for just a little bit that we need. So I'm just gonna turn this and then we will be good to go for the next step. Okay, so I've got my front of the shirt folded in half so I can see where the center is. I've got my ruler, so I'm marking with my ruler about four inches from the bottom. So I'm just gonna start pinning this sort of centered on this side. I'm gonna pin it all the way around to make this little pocket and then I'll just pin across the top as well, just to give the idea of a cargo pocket. And then I'll do the same on the other side. Okay, so it's pinned and I've just turned the raw edges under at the end and covered up the first raw edge. So I'm just gonna go egg stitch around this to keep it in place. Okay, so here are the pockets. I just sewed two seams around them and then I put a little cam snap just to make it look like a button, or you could, see I'm using these cam snaps, or you could use a button and sew it on. And they're a little wonky, but you know, maybe Everest has a bunch of stuff in her cargo pockets. Anyway, <laughs> we're ready to put this together. So we will take the back of the shirt, put it right sides together with the front of the shirt, and we're gonna line up the shoulders and then we're gonna clip along here and sew that seam and same with the other shoulder. Okay, so now that the shoulder seams are sewn together, we're gonna put the neckband in. Let me find my neckband, here it is. So what you need to do is sew the neckband together on the short ends. And then we're gonna do the same as we did for the waistband yesterday in yesterday's leggings video. We're gonna turn it right sides or wrong sides together and then we're gonna quarter it off. So I'm just gonna sew this seam and then I'll show you that. Okay, so I've sewn that little seam. Now I'm just gonna turn it wrong sides together and put a clip. And then I'm gonna go to the opposite edge or opposite side of this little tube. Line up these raw edges and put another clip. And then same thing on the sides. We'll line up those two clips and then put a clip over here to find the Next quarter mark and same on the other side. Then we do the same thing on the shirt. We find the center front. The center back. And then you cannot assume that the side seams are the center. They actually are not on most shirts. So we line up the front and back clips and find the center of the side. And it is usually an inch or, inch or two ahead of the shoulder seam on the front. So there we go. Then I'm gonna flip this shirt inside out. We'll start with this, putting this seam at the center of the back. And then do the front. So we're just matching the clips and lining up the raw edges of the fabrics. And then the sides. Okay, 
Okay, and then just like yesterday, we're gonna put the shirt on the bed of the machine with this uh, neck band on top, and we're gonna pull to ease the neck band into the shirt. Okay, so we'll do that. Okay, so I'm gonna start just ahead of that center seam at the back. Just line up my raw edges and put this under the presser foot. And then I'm going to get the next section lined up and pull as I'm sewing, just lightly pull. be doing the same thing if you were using a stretch stitch on a regular machine. It doesn't matter whether it's a serger or a regular machine. Okay and then when I come to the end because I am using a serger I'm just gonna sew past where I started and then pull off the machine or chain off. Now we're just gonna check like we did yesterday and make sure there is no holes where we might have missed catching an edge. And it is good. If you want to, you could fold this seam down at the back and top stitch, but I'm not gonna be that fancy. So that's what our neckband looks like. Okay, so now we need to put the sleeves in. It's easier to do the neck band without the sleeves in. That's why you do that first. Then we need to find the center of our sleeve, which we did cut these on the fold. So there will be a clear center right here. And we're gonna put that right sides down with the shoulder seam. Then I'm gonna pin the edge, the, the far edge first, and work my way back like I did before where I line these edges up to make sure I have even fabric at the edge of the shirt and then I work back to the center. And then I'll come back up to the top of the shoulder of the shirt and clip back to the center as well and this is easier to get the fabric spread evenly on the shoulder of the shirt. This is called easing in the sleeve. Okay, then I'll do the same on the front of the shirt. I will match up those outside edges and then work my way back. And then come back up to the shoulder and work back towards the center of that section. Just get all that fabric evenly spread around that curve. So I'm just gonna go sew this sleeve curve 
and then I will repeat with the other side of the shirt. Okay, so this is what the first sleeve looks like. And so we do have that little trim piece here now that I added to make it look more like Everest. So now I just repeat for the other side. And get that second sleeve in. So I'm just gonna find the center and then put that right sides against the shoulder seam again. Okay, so I'll finish this second sleeve. Okay, so both sleeves are attached to the shirt. Now we're just gonna continue working inside out. We're going to match up the, the um, armpit of the shirt and get this all aligned so the seams are matching. Put a clip there and then we just clip down the sleeve and down the edge of the shirt and align your outside edges just like before. So I'll align those wrists first and then I'll align the bottom of the shirt and then I will work back to the center. Okay, so there is the shirt with the side seams sewn. And now all we need to do is add cuffs and a waistband. Now, if you're using the elidactyl pattern, there are options to hem your sleeves and your shirt so you don't have to use bands. But I don't like hemming, as you can probably tell from the shirt I was wearing. So I am going to use bands. So I'm going to do the same thing as we did for the leggings yesterday and the neckband. I'm going to just sew the short ends together and quarter this off and quarter off the shirt. And sew that on by gently pulling on the band to make it match up with the shirt. And then the wristbands, the same thing, you sew this short edge, then you turn it wrong sides together. I'll show you when I get there. Okay. Okay, so I've got the waistband sewn on that short end seam. Now I'm gonna quarter it off, just like I did with the neckband. So if you're not doing bands, then you would be cutting the shirt a slightly longer length and the sleeves a longer length. And the pattern has a, a mark where you cut if you're doing bands. So you would just ignore that and cut the whole length. So we'll get this waistband on. And then this will also hold the shirt to the body a little bit tighter at the bottom. If it's hemmed, it'll be a little bit looser. So it's just whatever you prefer. Okay, and then just the center of the front and the center of the back. As we know the sides are right on the bottom and then I'll just pop this inside out again I like to work with the shirt on the bed of the machine and just work inside the tube when I'm sewing and I'm gonna match up the band with a side seam the seam on the band with the side seam on the shirt so that it's less conspicuous Okay, and then I'll do the other side. And then the middle. Okay. 
and the back. Okay, so just like the neckband, I'm going to just match up those raw edges and pull the band as I'm sewing. Okay, so the waistband is on. Now for the wrist bands, you just sew that shorter edge together, turn them wrong sides together. This is a little seven year old wrist, so it's a little bit small for my little girl. And then you match up your seams and put a clip there. And then I usually, you could quarter these off, but it's so small that really, I think just putting the one on the opposite side is enough. Okay, and then you just grab your sleeve and put your cuff down in your sleeve. and match up that seam on the cuff with the seam on the sleeve. There we go. And then just pin that opposite edge. And then the same thing, I'm just gonna have the sleeve on the bed of the machine, the cuff is gonna be on top and I'm gonna be just working around in this tube and pulling just slightly. It's not, it's not a lot to make this fit in there. So just a slight tug going around will fit this into the sleeve. Okay, my cuffs are on. Now, I just wanna show you if you are using a serger, this is what I do with these little serger tails. I put them through this very thick needle that is easy to thread. And then just tuck them, put that needle in underneath some of these stitches and just pull. And then I trim so that that is tucked in and hopefully not going to come apart. Okay. Same with this one up here. On the neckband, I will do the same thing. There we go. Now I will turn this. And there is our shirt for our costume. So the next video will be making the hat with the puppy dog ears. So thank you for sewing along with me today. Whether you're making a costume or a shirt, I hope this video has helped you. And we'll see you in the next video for the finishing touch on the costume, which is the hat. Don't forget to click like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more videos from Daydreams of Quilts.